Hi, I'm Annie with Miserable Cow Coaching. Contact info is in the description. Do you want to type my sister? Um, this is my sister, Sydney, and I'm going to ask her just some basic questions and get her talking. And I'd love to hear your input. What type do you think she is? I have some guesses, but I'm really unsure. Just a quick note. Sydney has no prior knowledge of these questions. She's had no time to pre-process. She's just answering the questions in the moment as I'm asking them, which I think is a good thing for typing. Also, I'm going to break the questions down into chapters. That'll be in the description section. So if you want to skip around and see how she answered different questions, feel free. Okay, so hello, Sydney. Hello. First of all, I guess just tell us how old you are. We talked about this yesterday. I'm 38. I'm going to be 38 in June. I'm 37. Okay, so she is 38 and I will be 45 in a couple of days. So there's a pretty big difference between us. Okay, so first question, just tell us what is your average day and week like? I wake up around 5.30 or 6. I, I sleep with my two-year-old daughter. And so when she wakes up, I wake up. And usually my uh, almost five-year-old son will come in and get in bed with us and snuggle for a couple minutes. Uh, and then we ask the two-year-old if she's ready to get up. And when she, when she stops telling us no, we all get up and we go make breakfast and um, I'll either make the make everybody breakfast and eat with the kids, or I'll make them breakfast while they watch a show or talk to each other, and then um, eat when I go to work or um, when my husband gets up. I might go for a run or exercise, um, and then eat a little bit later. And then I work from home in my my office is in my bedroom, and so I go to my computer and I work there. And I'll have, if I have meetings that I just need to listen to, then I might like fold laundry or walk around the house or do dishes or sweep or something. But if I have a meeting that I have to actually be in and think about, then I'll be sitting in my office um, and um, then do other, other work in my office that I need to do. I'll usually go and eat around 11 and um, and if my kids are home, we eat around then too. And if the kids are home, they go for a walk around 10 before that. And if I'm not in the meeting, I might go walk with them and my husband. And then uh, I get off work at four and either hang out with the kids while my husband makes dinner or I go get the kids from childcare and then bring them home and hang out with them while he makes dinner. I've been doing some like unit studies with the kids. So we did rainbows and learning about how eyes work and the ocular nerve. And then we did um, music and hearing and how hearing works and deafness. And then we did art because we were going to see the Van Gogh exhibit. And now we're doing the rainforest. And so we do like a craft and read a book, do some kind of activity and usually something science related and something more creative. And then we have dinner at five or between five and six. And uh, it's a, a challenging time because the, the kids are either loud or we're trying to get them to eat because they're not eating. And so it's my husband and I try and have a conversation, uh, but we're not always successful. And then um, either me or my husband will do the dishes and then the other one will hang out with the kids and um, we'll either watch a show or take a bath with the kids. And then bedtime is at seven. So I'll go lay down with my daughter and my son and read them each a story. And my, my son started reading early readers, so he'll read one too. And then he goes with my husband to read like a chapter of a chapter book and he goes to bed. And then I stay with my daughter and listen to my audio book until I fall asleep, until, well, till sometimes I fall asleep until she falls asleep. And then I'll get up and like watch a show or look, look at things on the internet or something. And then I go to bed by 10. Okay. The days. So tell us what you do on the weekends. 
Um, we might have a play date with some other kids or we might stay home and, uh, watch a, a family show together. We definitely go on walks, at least one walk every day. We, um, might go to a store. We haven't done that as much during the pandemic. My husband does all the grocery shopping instead of us going together now. Um, but we might like go to the dollar store or, um, run to the grocery store ourselves if we need something that we didn't get. Um, we do a lot of crafts, painting and drawing, um, uh, playing with walkie talkies or playing restaurant or kitchen or anything like that, whatever the, the current thing is that we do. Um, I, We'll try to exercise. I usually exercise more on the weekdays because it's distracting to have the kids around, but I might try and go for a run so that I can exercise where the kids aren't. Um, and my husband and I listen to the news every day, but separately, like in our headphones, we don't like the kids to hear the news. So we listen to that. So we'll do that on the weekend too. And I might listen to another podcast or two after the news on the weekend because I have more time before because I don't have to go to work. And we play virtual D and D once or twice a month on the weekends. And once a month we have family dinner. So we go to my mom's house and uh, Annie, my sister, and then um, the other, uh, the other family members come to that and we have dinner together. Um, so tell us, what do you think is wrong with the world? I think that people are not willing to explore other people's perspectives. I think that people think that they are understanding and able to see other people's perspectives because they accept new information that they might not have originally agreed with that still fits within their worldview frame, uh, but are not able to actually take the perspective of another person and understand that people think and know differently and that there can be multiple truths. Mm. Multiple truths. Okay, so think of a really stressful time in your life and describe that. Well, there's little stressful times in my life, you know, once a week, but if we're talking about like large stressful events in my life, I guess being, um, the, do you want the actual event or like the characteristics of the event? Whatever you're comfortable with. I guess, so I, I was dating somebody who ended up spending all my money and, um, and not, not being the, uh, a good partner and cheating and, you know, all of these things. And I was with them for a really long time. And I, and I think that it was stressful to be broke like you know living in a trailer with no electricity or heat or running water living on eating a dollar a day in the middle of winter you know like that's stressful but I think what was more stressful was coming out of that because when I was in this situation I could kind of give over that it was the way that it was other people were making the decisions and blame it on other things but the, the more stressful thing was coming out of it and realizing that i could have changed it at any time so i think that what is stressful for me is uh making decisions and relying and understanding yeah ha having to make decisions and understanding that i have the ultimate power to make things turn out well or not for me right so sort of a discovery of your own agency. So and rediscovery over and over again. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I just, I tend to let people do things if, if they will <laughs> and I don't have to. So, mm, yeah. So what do you think, what do you think your thought process is when that's happening? When 
things are just kind of happening to you or you're somehow allowing it, what do you think is going on there? I think it depends on the situation. Sometimes I think that other people m- must know what they're talking about because they're speaking so certainly of it. So I must be wrong mm. or that, um, well, I made this decision. So it, m- it must have been for a reason, even though I don't currently know what that reason is anymore. Um, so I, I think, I think it's just lack of confidence in, in my decisions and also just a tendency to be habitual. Mm. Stick with what is. Mm -hmm. And when you say that maybe it's what, what did you say? Maybe it, it is just the way that it's supposed to be or something, but you can't remember the reasons. Do you remember that? Do you mean that there was originally a, like a rational thought process, or do you mean in the sense that everything happens the way it should? <laughs> you know, like on the grander scheme of like scheme of like the universe or some like universal design, things happen the way they should. Or do you literally mean that there was at one point a rational process and you made a decision but you forgot? I think that I assume that I made a decision. I'm not sure that I ever actually did, but my memory is also pretty bad. And so I think I, like, you know, when I was in the relationship with that person, that was not a great relationship. We were together for over seven years. And so we just continued to be in it because it was like, well, we've, we've been making this decision to stay together for so long. So there must be a reason that we're doing it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, must be a reason that we're together. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I think I believe that everything will be okay. Not necessarily that everything happens for a reason, but I recognize that that comes entirely from a place of privilege. Like, I just know that I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I believe that about the world. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us more about your memory. Um, well, like I, I can't get through making, uh, muffins or bacon in the oven without forgetting that I'm doing it. (laughs) Like I have to have timers. I have to have calendars. I have to have reminders. Um, I, I don't, there are some things I remember and some things I don't, and I haven't been able to figure out the pattern of it. I think it's more short-term memory, but there are also long-term things that I don't remember. My husband got me like a, a bracelet that every year on our anniversary, he gives me a little, it's like a, you know, it's not Pandora, but it's like a little Pandora bead because I will not remember how long we're married. It took me a while when you asked me to remember how old I am. And we talked about it last night, you mm-hmm. know, like it just, I don't remember how old my dog is. I it, like, I, I have to, I would have to like go down, go and look Your at Your dog's it. old. He's, he's pretty old. <laughs> pretty. Yeah. I don't know. So but, like, what about, it, what you. about like, what's your earliest memory from childhood? How far back does it go? It's hard to answer because I don't know what's actual memory and what's recalling of stories that people have told me. Mm-hmm. I vague, I mean, I, I think a memory is roller skating in the driveway at our new house in Arizona when I was about seven. That's so old. Do you, what about anything before that? Anything before that, I more or less think that I'm remembering stories people told me. I maybe remember being in the, the TV room at the house in Dallas and accidentally watching Carrie because it scared me, but I could also be remembering that somebody told me that, but I, I, you like, I remember what my room looks like, but I have pictures of my room Mm -hmm. too. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm really remembering it or not. Huh? Yeah. Well, I was there. I remember. (laughs) I remember that you had a vinyl black and white floor in your room and it was always messy. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. So now tell us about like the highs, like when are you really happy? What's like a, an amazing memory. I think like momentary highs. I like, 
walking by myself, listening to podcasts in Forest Park. Like that's probably when I feel my best being, being in nature, being, feeling independent, like mm-hmm. feeling secure in making my own choices and taking care of myself. Um, I really like spending time with my kids, you know, like that can also be some of those stressful moments too, but I like, I like when I feel like I'm firing on all central cylinders, like when I'm having a, a back and forth with somebody who I think is really funny and like making them laugh or having uh, an intellectual conversation with somebody that I respect their opinion and and we're like actually having a back and forth. So I think probably the times when I feel confident in my independence and my my intellectual value. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now let's go to what's the biggest challenge in your life right now? Probably all all relational things like staying calm with my kids, understanding how to balance, um, having a younger kid and an older kid and making sure that they get equal attention, trying to have a relationship with my husband when there are two children always competing for attention and being able to have the, the time to like figure out what we enjoy about being together now, you know? Mm -hmm. What do you enjoy about being together now? We sometimes will stay up and have like really like conversations about the state of the educational system. And that's really interesting. So like, again, when I'm having a back and forth with him, because I do think that he's really intelligent and I like having those conversations, but most of the time, because we have these kids, like either our conversations are very brief very one-sided or very focused on logistics or focused on our children. So those conversations are few and far between. Yeah, that's understandable. So when you talked about your schedule before, obviously you have kids. So there's a reason that lunch is at 11 and bedtime is at seven and the reading and all that stuff. Before you had kids, was your schedule more go with the flow or did you still sort of have like some habitual schedule? I think that I always, yeah, I mean, it's not the same habit over a number of years, but I do always have some schedule in mind and it might change depending on trying things. It's kind of like, you know, diet hopping for your life, right? Mm -hmm. Like always trying to put order to things and organize things. I always wanted things to be as efficient as possible and as balanced as possible. I was drove mom crazy because I wanted everything to be like, I wanted my hair parted down the middle. She always wanted it parted to the side. I wanted all of the pictures on my wall in my room balanced. I wanted the, the volume to be on an even number. I wanted to sit in bed before I got up and think about the most efficient route through my day, getting dressed and making the food and things and not waste any steps and know what was going to happen. She would tell me stories about, okay, this is what the first day of school is going to look like and that kind of thing. I remember when you were little in the house in Texas, you were very particular about the way that your toys were organized. They were sorted and categorized in little bins and your room was very clean. I definitely still do that. I, I was, I had a party for Eleanor this weekend and there were, you know, kids and chaos and running around and toys everywhere, which doesn't bother me anymore. I, I did have, it used to bother me, but that guy that I dated was a hot mess. And I just, I had to give up on being bothered by any of it. And which is nice with kids because it just happens. So it doesn't bother me that the mess is there, but I went and started picking up and cleaning and told the other moms, like, I, do, I don't need you to do this because I'm not doing it because I want it to be clean. I'm doing it because it's what I enjoy doing. Like yeah. I like organizing things. I used to walk down to the 7-Eleven when I was little and like organize the candy so that they were all in the right spot and like they were level evenly. And mm-hmm. it's just what I like to do. And I also like, one thing I do remember from being younger, you were talking about the toys is like, I would get really upset 
and I, I do, I do get upset. Like, I mean, compared to my husband, he's like very even keel. So I, I will, I will kind of fly off the handle sometimes. Um, but I'm always like very remorseful about it. Like I would get really mad and I would throw my stuffed animals about across the room. And then I would burst into tears and run after them and apologize to them for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think I just have, well, a couple more questions. So what are you afraid of? I'm afraid that I'm not empathetic. Yeah. How so? Um, I think it is still has to do with my lack of confidence in my decisions. Honestly, um, there have been people like that guy that I did that said that I wasn't empathetic and I never really could figure out, do I lack empathy or are you just an asshole? You know? Um, and I'm not, I'm not social. I'm not like at work. I don't get, I don't get that kind of what, what I perceive as fake social banter, but I think some people really mean it. Like they care what other, about other people and are interested in other people. And I am to an extent, but I feel like other people are more, but I also don't know because maybe they're just pretending because society tells us that we're supposed to care about other people but do people actually care about other people like am I normal and I'm just not pretending or <laughs> or am I not normal and I should actually care more about other people huh. and what they're doing yeah that's interesting yeah I have a lot of that but I'm totally cool with it I do care about people, but I'm also not fake, you know, yeah. and that, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm listening to you and like biting my tongue, but you know, there was some, there was some gaslighting and some, um, some sociopathic behaviors. I'm not, I'm not like diagnosing or labeling. I'm just saying narcissistic tendencies. So, mm -hmm. so if you felt like you're not empathetic, you know, I mean, could be just gaslighting, you know, yeah, but I, but I feel know. that, you know, in my day, I mean, I, yes, I think that's true, but it, uh, but I also do wonder about it in general, because like, you know, they're the, the people, the like female friends, for example, that I gravitate towards are people that ask me questions and I don't do that for other people. Do they actually care or are they doing that as a strategy or as to be, to make friends or as just because they know that that's what good people do or do they really want to know the answers to those questions they're asking me and I I don't know yeah yeah I can that's relatable um because because you don't know because sometimes it is just like a social convention or some slight social manipulation yeah and the person that I you know have the most access to understand the the truth about is probably my husband I mean he's He's, I don't think he, that he's too worried about telling me something about himself. Like, I think he's honest with me and he is further on the spectrum than I am away from caring about what people think or caring about being interested in them. Like, I don't, I don't think he's particularly interested in asking me questions either. <laughs> like, I just don't think he cares. Uh, so, so yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't know if that's. Well, I think he's just not communicative. He's thinking thoughts inside of that quiet, quiet. Yeah, but he's head. thinking his own thoughts. He's not yeah. wondering what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, maybe. He's, yeah, he's he, he talks. He talks a lot. He talks to me, but he doesn't ask me things. Yeah, yeah. He's he's an enigma. Well, I I've only known him for ten years, so it's gonna take <laughs> at least another twenty. <laughs> um, okay, so one more question: What would your ideal be? Your ideal life be like in ten years? Uh, well, I will have a 15 year old and a 12 year old. And I would like to be doing a job that I like doing, mm -hmm. that I enjoy. I would like to, I would like it to be flexible so that I can be there 
for my kids. I would hope that I have a relationship with them where we can talk to each other. Um, I hope that my husband and I have hit a stride where we can like go on date nights regularly and have a good time, maybe travel um, some with or without the kids, both. I, I am currently casually focused on getting female friends. And so I think one of my biggest goals would be to have some friends, one or two friends that I felt like I could, could and wanted to call and talk about anything and like go out to coffee once a month or something like that. And that, you know, um, I'd like to be confident in my decisions and not assume that if someone else has a strong opinion that they're right Mm -hmm. and that I must be wrong if mine is different. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to be healthy, but not obsessive about it. Like not, not care what I, what I look like. Mm-hmm. There for a minute, Henry. Um, but but you know, just like be making d- day to day healthy choices as a part of my routine, and not changing my routine, and trying to think about ways to do things better, like not stressing out about things as mm-hmm. much. Okay, so one more thing. You said work that you would enjoy. Do you have time to answer one more question? Sure. Um, what what work would you enjoy? It has as much to do about the, with the work, honestly. I mean, I, I guess I'm trying to figure that out right now because I'm going to apply. I have applied for another job and I'm trying to decide if I want to take it. It pays more money, but it is less creative, but it's with the same team of people. Um, so I like the people. The money is honestly more important to my husband than it is to me. I don't care that much. I make enough to be comfortable and I'm fine. We're thinking about sending the kiddos to private school. So that'll cut down on our money. It'll cut down on being able to work less time in 10 years to spend more time with my kids. It's less travel. So in that way to, you know, in getting towards my 10 years goals, it is important to have that money. Um, but I, something, something a job that is flexible, a job where I like the people that I work with is probably the most important thing to me. I think that right now I like that my job is creative and I like the creativity of it. I create trainings and things like that. And I have a lot of autonomy. The autonomy is really important to me, but I, I honestly think that I would be, I would get into the groove of like being a, uh, a programmer or, uh, like even accountant, like I do like that. A programmer of what? Like a computer programmer. Really? Yeah, I like. That's that's nice to me. (laughs) I like those kind of detailed things. I like things where I like creativity and I like the kind of straightforward monotony. Like I like both of those things. Maybe maybe a job that had equal measures of both of those things, with which I think is attainable in the field that I'm in right now, honestly. I think that I can get that and I have that to some extent now. But really, I want to get paid a lot, but not have a lot of uh, decision-making authority, which is not, not super practical. Uh, yeah, because of the responsibility? Yeah, because of the responsibility and the stress and, you know, yeah. Like, I don't particularly, I, I don't want to, I've, I've been in positions where people have asked me if I want to be more on the politics side and engage with legislature more. And I'm just not really interested in that. I'm not, I'm not competitive. I'm not driven enough mm. for that. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's interesting, but I just, I don't, I don't want all that pressure. I also really don't want to be bored. I am so much happier when I'm busy and I don't have downtime at work. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, Do you have anything else to add? Anything come to mind? I don't think so. It's a lot of good stuff in there. 
I think that the people will um, be able to see some functions and some animals in here. So thank you for doing this. And mm -hmm. I'm going to end the recording now. All right.